From the side podcast are delighted to announce that our main podcast sponsor is Fields Joinery. If you are watching on YouTube, all of their social and website links are on the screen now. However, if you are an audio only listener of the podcast, do head over to fieldspropertygroup.co.uk. That's fieldspropertygroup.co.uk. And do not hesitate to get in touch and find all of their information on the website there. We'd like to thank Fields Joinery for sponsoring the podcast from day one. It really goes a long way and I hope you enjoyed the episode. Hello and welcome to From the Side podcast, episode number one. The podcast is going to be focusing on the non-league football in and around Liverpool, travelling, a bit of a road show um, to go and speak to all the managers, chairmen, players of all the non-league clubs within the city. Uh, I'll let you in- introduce our first guest, Jay. Uh, yeah, so just introducing Paul McNally, new city Liverpool manager. Nice Thanks. one for coming on, Paul. Thanks, gents. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Um, thanks for coming to the training facility that we've got, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, just to jump straight in then, New City Liverpool manager, how has that come about? Um, well, obviously I've done, I've done a couple of interviews in the past and that explaining, but look, it was an opportunity I couldn't I couldn't turn down to come here. Um, the club that I feel is going in the right direction. I had a lot of ties at Skemmon and loved my time there and I built that club up and I've got very fond memories, but I just felt it was the right time to move on. Yeah. Um, probably from a selfish point of view, for to progress my goals and and see if I can get to where I need to be or where I want to be eventually. Um, that's how how I feel to take me to the next level. And yeah. I give me all for scam, and they all know that there. Um, and I wish I could have done it with them at some point, but it wasn't to be. And I'm and I'm doing it with City Liverpool now. So obviously. How does the, how does it how does it obviously come about? So do you get a phone call from obviously Paul Paul's the chairman here, isn't he? So do you yeah, get a phone so, call? To so the, we played on the the Monday. We first game we played Prescott Cables. We won three two. We were third. Then I've actually we, seen that video of you <laughs> pelting down the line. <laughs> yeah, trying to run, <coughs> I was trying to run a hobbles along and then <laughs> hobble back. Um, Look, that was just raw emotion then on the on the day. It was um it was a very good game to be fair. Um and then obviously that night then like I believe the managers to part of the LO. Um and then a couple of days later the club have I've spoke with the club over there and we've made contact and they've asked would it be interested and I didn't give me decision until the Sunday morning. Yeah. Um it broke the Sunday afternoon, but I didn't give like they approached my club, obviously scam at the time, and it didn't give me decision until the Sunday morning. So I met all my players at Starbucks and Dunning's Bridge Road. <laughs> um, we all met and had a discussion, and it was a bit of an emotional one, obviously. And we, we had a good chat, and, yeah. and I explained my reasons, and, and every one of them agreed that was the right move at the right time, yeah. and no one would begrudge me. Um, and that, that was it. Then I moved, and then it was a whirlwind. Then for the next, like. <laughs> The next couple of hours, to be honest, I was at my son's FA Youth Cup game later on that day at Lower Brecht, and my phone was just going off constantly because I've been announced. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "So I'm watching an FA, well, I'm coaching an FA Cup Youth Cup game, and then I'm dealing with that." So it was a hundred miles an hour. For just feeling your phone buzzing in your pocket for the next twenty four hours. After that, it was like honestly, my head was a blur, and and for the week afterwards, probably it was it was a blur, and then the last. We call two. We've started to get to grips and nail things down. And so, have you brought um, all the coaches that you had at Skem with you? Yes. Yeah, so I've brought my assistant manager Graham Hastings with me. Coaches at Preston as well. On, on was the he on RB license, Graham? Graham, no, his son was Danny. Danny, yeah, Danny. Yeah. yeah, Danny's a good coach as well. He, he was on his B license. But Graham's a fantastic man and a fantastic coach. Um, and he was always, if I was ever moving, I was always hoping he'd come with me mm. and. He did, and it was with a heavy heart for him as well because he, he coaches for the Skem Academy and he's yeah. fr- from Skem. Um, and I brought Adam James with me, who, who was basically I brought him in about a month <laughs> before, and he's a top coach, top lads, and I brought him with me. And the only way I'm going to succeed was by bringing me right people with me. And yeah. I, I firmly believe I've got the right people, and I've brought Lee Carr in as my physio, and I've, I've got the right team behind me. I firmly believe. <coughs> Going back a bit then, Paul, um, <laughs> stars the Camelot before you went to Liverland and there you got, joined his first team clothes, got the first ever promotions to the highest level in football. How was that as a manager who had only been really in the game relatively new? 
Yeah, well, the Camelier team, um, look, I was assistant manager under Tony Sullivan before, and when they were in Evo Stick, we then restarted, Tony went on to Witten Albion, and then I inherited that team and built on it that season, and look, we've done fantastically well, we got promoted some really big players there, top players, Joey Zibaleiro, John Couch, Danny O'Brien, I'd be doing a disservice to the rest of them, so like Michael Grogan's, they were, they were a top team at that level, already an Evo stick side on paper, and the only team that was as good as them in that league was Adam Collieries at that time. Yeah. We then moved up, got promoted, and then a lot of things didn't work out the next season, I, was, I think we were about 15th, it was tough. Um, budget weren't the same as what it should have been for that level. That, that's no slight on the club. Um, players were getting a little bit older. Maybe some of the quality weren't coming in as good. And then it got sacked. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, look, I, I'll be honest, I think a sacking's good on everyone's CV. People avoid the sack. Um, yeah. I don't think it's a bad thing. Now looking back, it actually made me the person that I am, the manager that I am, because then you realise if you're going to do things... Do it with your own set of plums, as they say. Do you look and back? That, that's how I look at it. Do you look back though and think if I'd have done this thing differently, or I'd have done, started him? In, do you know what I mean? Would you think? Yeah, I but, wouldn't have got. Wouldn't have got. But the sack. I think it was inevitable that yeah. I was getting the sack from there anyway. Regardless, I don't think it was anything to do with on the field performances. Um, even though they weren't great, like politics. We were, and we were in two cup quarterfinals, and one was against Tramir at the time. Look, and, and I just feel at the time maybe. They pushed me a bit earlier, do you know what I mean? And yeah. look, it is, it's their decision. Tony Sullivan then come in. <laughs> so I think that speaks a lot. But Tony's, we've aggrieved our differences with, yeah. with pals again. Um, it's all ground, that, do you know what I mean? And we've they move forward, I moved forward, and I become personally a, a better person, a better manager from it. Because, as I said, you, you look at things differently then, and you're not... I was going to say, you, you bow down to the players' needs when you first become a manager and you, you sort of like... You're trying to keep everyone yeah, happy, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to keep... And they were big players, by the way. Yeah. They were established players around the city. And you're like, yeah, you, you're going with your team and you bow down to them a little bit. And then afterwards, um, still good friends, half of them. And I've, I've changed my tact a little bit. Now, yeah. now you've had that sacking on your CV, yeah. Yeah. So it's experience, isn't it? That's all it is. <coughs> yeah, then you did go into scam. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, after Little Nemecher I went into scam. Sorry, didn't, I didn't yeah. touch on Little Nemecher. Like, <laughs> no, well, in, in Liverland, um, highest ever level in football for them. And then you yeah. obviously had a, you beat AFC Liverpool as well in the FA Club. How was that? So, look, Little Nemecher is a fun club as well. As I've got fond memories of Camel Aids, um, when I was there at Liverland, I was there with Phil at first because I was out the game and I was giving him a little bit of a hand for that season. That I was just about to say that then. You, didn't you take, oh, didn't you <laughs> yeah. take like, a, like a bit of a break after Leeds and then you went in as yeah, first team yeah. coach in the summer with Staffel? I did, yeah. So I weren't really doing nothing. And you get that itch, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You want to be back involved. But I was happy just to be a coach because I'm still, I'm still learning. I'm still learning it. Now everyone's still learning it. But I was coaching my son's teams and I involved and I thought you know what if I can help them in any way I would and they like say it helped them that season and they got beat by City Liverpool didn't they in that <laughs> in that famous playoff yeah. um, but they went so close do you know what I mean and I, and I felt like my input was was good for that season Phil went to Bootle um, it nearly transpired I was nearly going to Bootle as well um, and then I've obviously done a U-turn and stayed at Little Nemecher as the manager and Phil's gone there and Look, we, we chose that. We had our own little paths at that time. and Similar to, similar to the Sully things, do you yeah. know what I mean? With me and that, like he's gone there and then he's not been in the job long, do you know what I mean? He's gone and then I'm still in the job, so... Sometimes people have got like a bit of a blind loyalty in footy, haven't they? Where they think, say like, you're the gaffer, you and then the assistant thinks, well, if he goes, I've got to go with him, type of thing. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? it, look, when Sully went to <coughs> Cavaliers, when he went to Witten Albion... My loyalty was with him. Yeah. But then there's got to come a point when do you decide, do I do I become a manager? Mm. If it's now, then go for it. If it's not to be, then you could forever be that coach yeah. or assistant manager, which is fine. That That's probably the best job in football, being an assistant manager or a coach, because everyone likes you. You haven't yeah. got to make them big decisions. You can still have your input in it, and you have to do that. But... 
going back to the Little and Remaker, when when I've took them over, they were a very close knit group. They're already in a half decent team anyway, and I've just built on them and made them a bit more structured and brought a couple of players in to add on top of that already good group, and yeah. we achieved more than expectations there. And it was a fantastic season. To be fair, they're, they're probably their best ever season that they've had football and wise and where to put them. So I'm, I'm happy that I've played my part in, in their success there. I was speaking to um, Paul Cooney, he'll be made up, I've said his name, um, when we were doing like a bit of research, he was saying the Remy board are just like, obviously not wanting to slag them off, but they're just happy just to just be there type of things, you know yeah, what I mean? look, I'm not, without, like, we're not going to slag anyone off, yeah. but we didn't see eye to eye with certain, there were certain, like, occasions that my methods weren't what they wanted. Yeah. Um, I were what they wanted the, and the same vice versa but it's football do you know what I mean I, I'd done my job that I was there to do and it was to get them promoted yeah. and and at the end of that season we had an agreement we had a chat and I was going to move anyway really but then it turned out that I got another bully <laughs> <put in me. laughs> but that, that was more to do with me moving wanting to move on anyway yeah. or thinking about moving on so it was more of a mutual decision anyway, yeah. do you know what I mean? Um, but I've got no grudges against them. Um, as I say, you, you make your own path and they've gone their own path, I've gone my own path and we're both successful for it. Was the um, was the scam job already in the pipeline type of thing or was, no, it, was no, you just no. looking at like another so, day? So I left them, Little Nemecher, in May, the end of May. I always remember the Champions League final weekend. Carious mistake. Oh, what a weekend. <laughs> that, what a terrible... <laughs> what a weekend. I met, them on, met them on the Monday in the Neddy and then I was gone that night. Um, and then, do you know what? I was a bit disillusioned with footy then, to be honest. I was a little bit like... I've got two teams promoted. And I've got the sack I, twice. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Sack as in, like, yeah. I've done the job. What more does people want? Yeah. Um, I know what I'm worth. I know what I can do. Um, but sometimes football's about politics. It's not about what you can actually do. It's more about if your face fits, um, if you're the right person for them, more than the right person for the job. Um, and it's done, done me job, like I say, and I took a bit of time out. Um, and I was in New York in November for my 40th, and I got a text off Dan Roberts, the scam secretary, would have be interested in an interview for the job. And... Looked at the league table, <laughs> <laughs> bottom of the league, um, I think they were on about three points at the time, six points I, I, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but they were bottom of the league, and I, I looked and I thought, do you know what, and I had a chat with the wife at the time, and she, she was like, what do you want to go there for, the bottom of the league, and I said, it's a massive club, I can take them somewhere, but I did, I went there, and the Thursday night when I got home I had an interview with the, the board and well, they were fantastic people and the next morning I was appointed and I'm not going to name players names in the, the team we, we all know we play for them but it was it was poor there to be honest yeah. it, it was poor the player pool was, was not fantastic um, good lads there but they didn't have no experience no characters um, and playing for relatively a pittance at that level so it was inevitable what was coming. The, the club took me on knowing that they were getting relegated to build a team for the next season. And Wasn't that around the time of the ground as well? Where they were having like... Playing were, cables, yeah. yeah. So when you're playing there and you're paying with the teams, they're profit from yeah. it. And it's taken away from you as well. Yeah, yeah. And look, there was about 10 people who used to just watch us at Prescott. I think I got one win there in about 20 <laughs> games. So, so that's not a record I'm very proud of. But um, <laughs> it was... Look, people were saying... I spoke to a lot of people in football and they were saying I was a mad taking it over and sometimes you've got to take a leap and just sometimes you just get a feeling don't you and just think nah I can do that they were, they were boss people they were boss yeah. people at the club and I just got that feeling I liked them and I wanted to do more than enough for them do you know what I mean and they were yeah they were similar to myself they wanted to win all the time they, look, they could see progression so they were happy they could have got rid of me at any stage of that yeah um, even though it wasn't my fault, you know what I mean? But they could have, and we pushed on, and 
it wasn't until a season later that we actually done any, and so I think it was around the time as well. We were, we were on the B license together, weren't we? Yeah. And like, <laughs> and every comedy, time we come in, comedy so, gold. Uh, every time so, someone will come in, how do you get on, Macher? The nah, weekend no. we got beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got beat, and it's just and I was thinking, wow, that fella, fucking hell, he's having a rough time every day. I tell you what, I did. I, I must have aged about ten years in that season. Um, you can remember that. Yeah. It was when I had to do my presentation for me B, and it was like. I had everything set up, and I was just like, well, he hasn't done that right, he hasn't done that right, he hasn't done that there. <laughs> it's gone from fucking but, week to week, game to week. But my methods are in place, yeah. and that was what I had to keep doing and believing in, that my methods were the right methods. It was just getting the personnel into what I wanted, and yeah. that takes time, that doesn't happen overnight at any level, do you know what I mean? So Was the, le- was the like a time in that run, obviously you said there, um, I think I've seen it as well on like... A news an article when I was when I was searching your name and stuff like one winning like tw- I was twenty six <laughs> twenty six games I mean, or so. was there I think a- it was Sam Sam Carroll put in the in the echo. My one win was against Kendall and he said the best win of my career. <laughs> he quoted it as that and I was like, wow, that makes me sound like a bad manager, <laughs> like a proper bum yeah. manager. The best win of my career and I was like. Pink echo <laughs> sort of <laughs> <thing>. frame it, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, but <clears throat> it was monumentally as in like. We got a win, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, didn't get another win the rest of that season, but it was just, it was the first step, do you know what I mean? It's like the first step and thinking, yeah, that's it's working, yeah, kind of working. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. What I asked for was we more coaching than I've ever done with any team. Yeah. In that first five months, I was drilling them down. I was even getting assessed for my B licence on there and everything. And then there were sessions that were happening and they could do them on the Thursday and then on the Saturday them same scenarios were happening but the players just and this is no offence to them they just didn't spot them and they couldn't take it through so yeah. everything that you're doing is <laughs> not happening on the Saturday yeah. which is crazy to say and you just stood on the side aren't you and just pull your head yeah, so I got, your I got mic'd up as well one game against Witness for me B licence <laughs> and you've mic'd up and you're listening to yourself and it sounded like um, what's his name Bassett <laughs> Mike Bassett it was like and you, you're thinking, what am I saying that for? Why am I saying it? it's frustration? Yeah. Because the same things are happening. But then when you watch the video back, I was working on a counter-attack. So defending deep to counter-attack, that was my session on the Thursday. Come the Saturday, knowing that we wouldn't have a lot of the ball, I could work on that. There was four occasions that it happened, but we just didn't have that quality, so we were through and just never scored. So yeah. we ended up getting beat 4-1. So that tells you a lot about where they were at, do you know what I mean? But... It wasn't for once or trying, they were there, but you just didn't have that execution, and that's no offence to that, and as you can see, I don't think there's many of them that are playing at this level, or even in the counties yeah. now, so it might be one yeah. or two, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Did <coughs> you like Bassett in the changes at half time? Oh, listen, I lost <laughs> my rag a few times, <laughs> and I don't like that, I'm quite calm, do you know what I mean, but uh, yeah, there was a few things that needed to tell, and when I went in, I was like, I've been winning I'm not used to losing but yeah. when you go there it's then it's changing the mentality and the culture and it's, like I say they were fresh out of academies they were nice kids but they just didn't have it's a different it's a different it's a type diff- of footy yeah. isn't it it's a different level the, yeah. like the MPL is like it's unforgiving you could get beat you could have a good side but still get beat 4 or 5 nil. Yeah. but I had not a great side on paper that most teams in the counties were so I have messages loads of times on Twitter, people going, why did they play for you? Um, they're not good enough. And I was like, I stuck up for me players, you to call. Yeah. Turns out they had a son or someone who knew someone and just their own hidden agenda. And I was yeah. like, defending them. But in reality, they wasn't because you don't get beaten 9 nils, do you, if you're, if you're a yeah. half-decent team. And they'd been beaten 9-1 before I was manager. And then suddenly when I'm manager, about five or six games... Colin Bay beat them 9 0. That was the lowest point of, of my life, I think, <laughs> of my football career. I was like, 9 0. And I've come off, and the Colin Bay fans are singing, you're getting sacked in the morning. And I, I looked at them and went, Do me a favour, to be fair. Yeah, you fucking yeah. might not be wrong there. No. But then a few players left, a change in the culture, change in the yeah. mentality. And we didn't get beat nine nils, we got beat five or six, <laughs> but we were lower in it. We were lower yeah. in it. And that that season, yeah, that was there that any first point season was the toughest season I've ever had in football, but I've learned from it as well. Was there a point in there where you thought, nah, it's not even worth it? 
to just there thinking about times, packing it in. Was, uh, yeah, there was. There was a few times I was questioning my sanity because I was putting all the hours in, and and I'm telling you straight, it's it's not about money, and I wasn't getting. I was getting twenty pounds. Yeah, twenty pounds a week to go to Skem. All know. the way to Skem, traveling Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday games, and that's what the players were getting twenty yeah. pounds, and that in itself tells you, like. The levels, because counties teams, there's local teams, the Pill County Prem teams. From, I'm, not, I'm not naming who they are, do you know what I mean? But yeah. they're, they're probably, there's one or two get more expenses, isn't he? Or even over the water, West Cheshire. Yeah. So it tells you the levels that like we were at. And yeah, I did question, was it all worth it? And part of me was like, do I just drop and just go and be a coach or an assistant manager? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is it for me? And it puts a strain on your family life as well, because... I'm going home on the Saturdays and I didn't have a dog at the time but you, you, you want to kick something and you're sitting in the back room and you, you're thinking what so, went wrong why why did it go wrong yeah. and, and that's where you need to take the highs into perspective and the lows and put them a little bit it's like having a full time job in it without without the full time without the full time wage it's very much a full time yeah. job um, so even now I'm in, I'm in work and in college and phone's going constantly and you're like yeah. we watch <laughs> do you know what I mean and you, you're sneaking a peek and you're like and then it'll ring it'll be another manager and I'm not the only manager managers at this level and the levels below we probably don't and coaches we don't, we don't get enough recognition Yeah. and even do you know what even harder county prem level under 21's level it's a thankless task because they're just there doing that job and Lads can say, oh, sorry, I'm going away this weekend. Do you uh, know what? I mean? do, do know what where's the motivation? That, that, that's what you'd have to ask is, where is the motivation? And the, be- the best one I've ever had is I got a text um, in the group chat and it said, um, I got a text in the group chat um, and it was just one of the lads and he said, uh, Oh, I've just been a go- I've been at the golf club. It got out of hand. That was at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that's got out of hand. That's, yeah, that's got out of hand so that's bad. Got out of hand. But then at nine o'clock, got another text off another one. Don't think I'll be able to come today. I said, "Well, will you start?" And so, if you don't come, you won't be playing again. And that's what I'm saying. And I'm not saying money motivates players, but it's sort of a tool, isn't yeah. it? To if you don't come, you're not getting paid. There, yeah, and I do think like you're st- still not professional, but you get a more level of professionalism and. Those that do at that level then progress higher and you yeah. see them and then you can begrudge them, do you know what I mean? But as I say, them levels, it's it's thankless. It's, yeah. um, I, I envy the, the people who do that, do you know what I mean? I take my hat off to them, I think. You had a good FA Cup run in uh, 2020 with Scam. What was that like? I've just been speaking about that in the <coughs> to, to Steve Milne then and he had a fantastic Vars run with the Ireland where they won it. Um, yeah, unbelievable. Beyond what I, I thought I could achieve in football, I'll be honest. Um, first round, wasn't it? First round, yeah. yeah. So we were on BT Sport, so I had me 15 minutes of fame, as they say. I, I actually in. watched that. Jay Webb, the set young centre-half. Jay Webb was on the bench, yeah. yeah. Jay Webb's a good lad. Good yeah, lad. He's, he's, one, he's, he's one of my mates, so I watched that. And yeah. then when he came on, I was thinking, why the fuck's he put Jay on? <laughs> <laughs> he's a boss lad, Jay. He's a, he's a good lad. And like you say, on paper, that team... How's it got to the first round? Do you know what yeah. I mean? But that's the magic of that cup. It's um, we played must have been seven games before we even got there. So we'd be Congleton away two one. We'd be Bootle two one. Bootle were, were good sides still as well. They were always near the top of that league. Um, we got we beat Pen Peniston Church three two. We were getting beat two 0 at half time first round. Went to Longridge away. Beat them with ten men. 1-0, they, they absolutely battered us off the park, but we rolled it out. Yeah. Um, Lancaster, we beat Lancaster, who were Nevo Stick Prem at the time, 2-1, on a torrential rainy day where everything just fell into place. The only disappointing thing was COVID. That was the... If there's one regret about it, that's what it is. It takes a, sort of takes the gloss off it. Yeah. Because... One, we never have fans in the grounds at Harrogate. I believe there would have been about five or six thousand. I believe Skem was, they would have took the full buses up there, yeah. the works. Um, so that was disappointing. Um, and the likes of the Lancaster games and all that, there wasn't fans in there then. So 
we've done it the hard way in a way. We went to Longridge, there was 300 of their fans in. But the, the cherry on the cake for me was the Stafford game, the Stafford Rangers game, which was the game before the first round. 600 of their fans, no scam fans allowed in because of the tiers. Yeah, yeah. Tiers that were in place, and we won 4 1. And 4 1 on an Evo Stick Prem team when you're Northwest County's team is two divisions higher. They had a lot of experience playing that day, so John Welsh was in the side, the lineup that day. Played in the Premier League, played for England, I yeah. think England's under 21s, right too, fantastic career. They had a couple of other players who were really experienced, and 4 1, that was like, you couldn't have wrote that, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But I was telling Steve on the way here, I was saying, literally, I'd spoke about it to the chairman in like early doors, I said, let's try and get to the first round, do you know what I mean? Just a pipe dream. I don't know whether it's one of them where you say it manifests so <laughs> <laughs> that, That's getting all um, meditation yeah, and yeah. all that, but I don't know. Maybe maybe I threw it into there and it, it did. And, it, and well, I don't think many people could achieve that now at, at our level. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I know Berry last night, they're one game away from it. and But the club they are, they were a football league club and I think... I don't think it'd be a bigger achievement if they did. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The only disappointing thing as well as COVID was Marine went to the third round, so it sort of took the gloss as well off it. Yeah, they had spares, didn't they? People looked at us and Marine, and being my we were a division below Marine, and they were looking at Marine, like, because they've got to the third round, they forgot about Scam getting to the first round. I was to say, it was the same year, wasn't it? Yeah, same, same year, year, yeah, same yeah. year. Um, and now when you look back on that game, I don't blame the lads, because it was a, a boss game, and Tim was eight and playing in front of cameras, professional team I just regret it a little bit we the, the miss, missed opportunity because I do feel like we, we were too easy to give the goals away we give yeah. the goal away after about 90 seconds do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. and then we give one right on half time but in between that we were solid we'd done our job we actually looked like we could have scored as well but I think the lads just froze do you know what I mean yeah. and that's nothing against them do you know what I mean it was um the team that I had then, if I'd have had a mix of that team what I had last season and that, who knows, we possibly could have been different. We could have been talking about getting to the second round, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But look, it's always on my CV, it's always on the club's history and it sort of put us back on the map a little bit um, and elevated the club to a little bit more high levels. She was saying when we first started, about when you first got the City Liverpool job, that being a whirlwind, yeah. the week of the first round game. Wow, that was like, yeah. So I was like, speaking to BBC, yeah. Um, speaking to the papers like Paul Joyce and that, and like the Guardian were phoning me up and BC Sport commentator asking me to go through things. It was like felt like I needed a secretary. So imagine <laughs> the top level, like all this while you're for full time in work yeah, as well. Yeah, all this. All, uh, we were quite lucky though, weren't we? Because we were all off. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I, mean? yeah. I, I say all off. We were all working from home, but. <coughs> it was, it was, it was 100 miles an hour then, and it was all, you need to do this, you need to do this, they come down, watch us train, I done a um, BT Sport were there, they were doing like a programme, and they were interviewing us, questioning, they were watching us train, it's like stuff you see on Match of the Day, stuff like yeah. that, and, and we was actually on Match of the Day as well, is it that's another one. <laughs> is it strict with the FA, that they like saying, it, this is what you're doing this, yeah, you're doing yeah, this, it was, it was, um, you're doing this at this time, and that? Yeah. I think if we'd have gone to the second, third round, if we'd have gone to where Marine was, you're talking Premier League players, then I think it would have even been even yeah. more stricter. Um, there would have been, like I had a few players who played, so Mikey Howard played and Kenny, they played for Marine, and they said to get that far and against them was on another level. But for us, it was like, yeah, it was, it was on another level. And Harrogate were the professional side, do you know what I mean? Mm. The pitch was perfect. Everything about it was, was spot on. It was just the results, you know what I mean? But because they've done that documentary, Harrogate, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, I can't remember yeah. whether. Oh, where they've where done yeah, they've done one where they've got into the league, so they got promoted that season. Yeah, so it was that it was that that year they done the um, they ended up at Wembley, didn't he? Yeah. Obviously not for the FA Cup. But. So that that the games before they were playing like Sammy and that, so yeah. people were like he's scouting them, and I was like, yeah, I'm just watching <laughs> them on the telly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Whereas. That was the advantages, and like Kevin's playing for me now, Kevin Ellison, and 
I spoke to Kevin as well and I asked him his opinion on them and he said they're a fantastic team and he gave me a little bit of info on them at the time. Literally on the coach going there. Yeah. Um, but I'd had info off other people, so Sammy were feeding into me coaches. I think Ryan Lowe spoke to Graham, my assistant, and was giving him little tips or wishing them well, do you know what I mean? Even the pool players were wishing us well and that. It yeah. was like... It was actually it, it was actually decent at the time. It, it was it, everyone like in our, in Liverpool and in the city and that was wanting used to wanting yeah, used to do it well. It was it was funny because like I didn't live in the gym, <coughs> so they told me that the schools were all made up. There was everyone was made up in scam and that, but I didn't see that side. But we went out for our Christmas night out and COVID, and we were in Punch Tammies. <laughs> we walked out in the day, all the scam team men, and we just did. There's the Skem players, there's the Skem team, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, you're on BT Sport, and it was like a little bit of a joke then, do you yeah. know what I mean? And like, it was good seeing that, do you know what I mean? Because these were all just lads from the city, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just a lot, I had a lot of Liverpool lads as well, do you know what I mean? So it was like, it was good that people seen us on the telly, and listen, you don't begrudge anyone if they were in that position as well, do you, do you know what I mean? No, it's like. If you if that's the the be all and end all of my career or anyone's career, you'd you'd happily bow out on that. If yeah. that's like your coaching epitaph, you've you've made the first round of an FA Cup from from the preliminaries or extra preliminaries, then seven wins I'll take that. Yeah. As I said at the time, if I started in as Liverpool in the third round or a, or a Premier League club, you've won the cup. Yeah. We won the equivalent to that, do you know what I mean? And Marine even the same. They've won more, so yeah. that was just a bigger achievement. But for what we had as a club and where we were, we had buttons. Yeah. Buttons, budget-wise, we were. it was David and Goliath, as they say, do you know what I mean? And I yeah, what, the, what we done was, yeah. I bet off the back of it, you had a good sleep life. Oh, it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. It was um, <coughs> stressful, because like, you've got to pick an 18-man squad and all that, and like, lads are... Uh, they all want to be involved, so even lads that weren't involved, I brought them still, do you know what I mean? Yeah, they've been yeah. part of that journey, and they might have played in the first round, or they might have played in that, and that's where it becomes a little bit more, like, people think, oh, you just drop them, you don't play them, and it's it's not, it's a little bit more personal, and you'd have to... Is that the hardest squad you've had to pick, do you reckon? Um, no, and the reason why is, it's sort of... Because it was an 18-man squad, it sort of petered out like there was one or two who dropped. We weren't as strong the last for that round as we was the previous two or three, yeah. if that makes sense. I had a lot stronger players, lads dropped off. So Jason Carey, if he's watching this, he, he dropped off after the brutal <laughs> game. And he's probably still kicking himself, so he, he left the club. He spat his dummy out and we had a little disagreement. and We've made up now, but... That's probably one of his biggest regrets. He yeah. left the club after we beat Bootle and he scored a goal. Do you know what I mean? Um, he then moved on and he missed that, but he probably would have probably would have started in that yeah. game and he knows that. And there's other players who, who moved on, do you know what I mean? And over them seven games, the team really like stayed similar, but there was players who evolved and that. So if I remember right, I don't think Jay Webb was there at the start. I think he'd come further down the line. Yeah, I think he was... Um he was, from what I know, Webber, he, he moved about a bit yeah, to try, yeah, and, to try yeah. and get minutes, um, minutes he everywhere. He might have been at IFC Liverpool and then he come back training with us and then he forced his way into the squad sort yeah. of thing. So it was always, um, yeah, it probably wasn't the hardest squad to pick, but then it did leave two lads out and then they were there and you feel a bit bad on them, do you know what yeah. I mean? But when you it's like you're doing something, you look over and they're just in the stand or something. No, they were they were they were they had the tracksuits on and they were making sure they walk <laughs> across the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> just with the tracksuits yeah. on, so BT Sport just sees them <laughs> bouncing across. Whereas on a normal match day, they'd probably just be standing there. But they were, yeah. There was a funny little story about Minnie in that as well, um, and he probably won't mind you tell mind me telling it. Um, he had a hat <laughs> when we walked in a Benny hat. And we walked off the coach and it had like a security name on it, on the front. And as we get off the coach, he, he's got it on, camera's right in his face, walking in. Getting the change, he's getting ready to go out to the warm-up. And he goes, put it on. And I went, what are you doing? So I'm wearing this, I've been paid to wear this. <laughs> 250 quid to wear this hat. And I went, you're not going out with that on me, we're not a Sunday league team. 
And he was like, oh, all right. Took it off. I said, they've just seen you coming in. They've got it there, do you know what I mean? And well, he, we, I'm still pals with Minnie now. He's funny. And he was like, text me the next, are we still okay? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, Minnie's is not a problem. I just didn't want him going on national television with a Benny hat in a warm-up, like warming up down. Like Dan Flinders no. or something, do you know what I mean? Be like that. I remember that <laughs> that Sutton goalie. He had the pie on yeah, the bench. That's the big what fat I, mean. I didn't want us looking a laughing stock as such, do you know what I mean? Yeah. We're already the lowest ranked team in the FA Cup and I didn't want us like drawing attention to ourselves with looking Didn't want to remember being remembered for that. Yeah, because we'd done everything professionally yeah. up until then. And it wasn't that it wasn't professional, but He'd never wore a Benny hat in a warm up. <laughs> <laughs> he'd never wore that in a, in his whole time. I've just got this picture of me. Yeah, just some lad just yeah. stood there in a stupid oh, hat and just listen, being. He, he just he looked shocked, and the rest of the lads looked at me and were like, <laughs> 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 "They agreed as well." Yeah. But look, he, he agreed. He's probably made good money off that. <laughs> I would have put it on myself for two hundred fifty. I should have put it on. <laughs> what was a bigger achievement for you then? Because eh? obviously, the end of last season with Skem, you got playoff winner with a 5-1 winner of uh, Cinderford what was the bigger achievement with them getting to the first round of the FA Cup or the playoff win um, financially it would be the first round of the FA Cup for the club because that, that was important to build and sustain what we did last season um, I think last season was probably the pinnacle I'd say um, football and wise and the team that I developed last season on another level of um, we went toe to toe with Macclesfield for eighty percent of the season. Most yeah. of the season we went toe to toe with them. January the 29th we were top of the league. We went to them and we were playing them. It was day one obviously and then they kicked on and won ten straight games. So um it tells you how close we pushed them. Um but to know to win the playoff probably um because it put them back in the Evo stick of the MPL where they had when it took over and they're now still there, obviously, and yeah, I'd say that one. But then financially, like I say, it was probably the FA Cup. A cup, like a cup, obviously getting to the first round, obviously getting knocked out, it's finished then, isn't it? Whereas like getting to the league, you didn't of not winning the league and then going in the playoffs, it's a full season's worth of work, isn't it? Yeah, you so know what I mean? so that that's exactly that was my yeah. point. So after the FA Cup, a lot of people were saying to me, even at the club. What teams are coming looking at you off the back of that and I was like I don't think they will but the, everyone was adamant oh they will you've got to the first round of the FA Cup but that wasn't ever my goal to just move on I wanted to build something sustainable and, and long longevity for yeah. them um, and then obviously we, we've gone into that season and it, it progressed and then we were flying we, we were we were unbeatable at times last season and we had a frightening front three of Danny Mitchley, Elliot Morris and Mikey Howard and they scored 80 goals between the three of them. They were like Liverpool's front three and they were immense but that over the course of a season was the longevity that I wanted and that puts you then into that next level of managers then that you can do it over a season, not over seven games. And yeah. Because in, in reality... It's hard to win seven games on the bounce. Not anyone can just win seven straight victories. But you could say, oh, you've had lucky wins there. Do you know what I mean? That wasn't great. Yeah. There's, there's a little bit of like, are you, just a, cup, are you just a cup manager? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I didn't want that. I wanted to build on something longer term. Do you know what I mean? And I did that last season um, with the squad that I had in the team. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to ask was, obviously... The JMO had a bit of, a bit of an issue with the pitch, didn't he, with the FIFA thing? So he's obviously had to go and play at Bursko. Did, did yeah. that affect anything? Like the um, decision? No, not your decision. You didn't say it, like, affect, obviously, playing at a different ground last minute. It was like a last-minute thing, it, it, wasn't it? It was a last-minute thing, like, to be fair. Um, yeah. It, was, um, it did affect a lot of things. Yeah. Because... It, it Look, I hope eventually they do get back to playing Skem and JMO because that's massive. Um, they lost a little bit of support from it, which I hope they do gain back. Um, but no, it, it did affect how how people viewed it a little bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it was really just at the start of the season. So yeah, it's like at the start of the season as well. That news, oh, that pitch that you train on every week and all, like you're not playing on that now. 
Yeah, don't get me wrong, it wasn't the best, the greatest the pitches. Other teams used to come and go out, it's like an American football pitch, yeah, the lines yeah. on it. But we had to play on that every week and we played quite well on it, so we've got no arguments. You can't just come to our grounds and say, oh, it's a crap pitch. We've got to play on it as well, yeah. and we've got footballers on there, so. But it does help you playing on there, you're training on there, and it was a home. They were building a home there, and yeah, it does. Because they've actually put it, a lot of work into it as well. I tell you more, haven't they? Massive. There's people behind the scenes there that put the stands up and all that. And the work they put in, do you know what? It, it's a shame that, look, at this time, at this present time, they're playing at base goal, so it's not the same playing at base goal yeah. for them. It's like playing at, at cables for them. Mm. Um, it's the same scenario. And look, they, they probably will get back there at some point because I believe they are making strides to do that. And don't think that's in my place now to say it because I'm not the manager, you know. Yeah, me, but, yeah. Um, as a club, I hope they do get back there and they move forward. Um, yeah. Obviously, coming into City of Liverpool, you've made some good signs, brought some players in from the Rylands and stuff, brought Kevin Ellison, who's massive. Was this all your plan when you go, or has it just been a. Have you set it out like I want to get Kevin in and stuff like that? Because obviously, all this experience, that's going to help the players, isn't it? I'd spoke to Kevin in, in the summer um, when he was available. It was just an off chance <laughs> chat. I, I texted him and I said, Kevin, are you doing it? And surprisingly, he wasn't. He'd been training on off and he trained with Nosley, I believe, um, just as a one off random session because um, I think he knows Carl. Isn't yeah. He? yeah. So he trained there um, and then I just said, Look, would you be interested in coming to Skem? He said, Never say never. Um, Come down to a training session, but he wasn't hundred percent fit. His calf was struggling. Then from that, he's gone to Ireland. Um, he come and watched two games for us, and then he went to Ireland. And didn't be good job that move. Dave's a fantastic manager. It was a fantastic club, um, and he made the right move at that time. I feel, I truly believe. But once he's become available, then asked him the question again. Yeah. Fancy a Kevin, and he said, "Why not? It's on his doorstep." Do you know what I mean? It's. It's a city Liverpool, do you know what I mean? It's the it's Liverpool club. Um, he's basically coming home. He hasn't played in Liverpool, I think, since he was playing back non league. So it's brought him back to the Um It's given him, he's already got a massive profile anyway, hasn't yeah. he? And it's probably lifted his profile even more on the club's profile. So, yeah, it was a signing that you can't turn down. And it, look, just for not just his football and ability, just for what he brings to the club and brings to the the lads and to myself and that. It's probably it's a win win, isn't it, for him? For, yeah. Well, for most people, the City Liverpool biggest non league in the city, isn't it? Exactly. To be fair. Yeah. And then for you, you're getting the experience. And he's, look, he's, once he's on that pitch, he's like another manager or another yeah. coach on the pitch. He's doing what we ask and he's carrying it out. And look, I've got no qualms in him longer term. I think Kevin, he's been at the top level of the game and I think longer term, I think he will eventually end up at some point as a an assistant manager or a coach or even a, a manager if he ever wants to be yeah. a lot higher than this level um, I think he will but at now he's want to play and I'm hoping he's want to play till he's about 50 because he's still got <laughs> still, he's still bagging got, he's still bagging he's still got loads to offer in that that, um, that department and that um, and look he's fantastic so as for strategy of signing it was sort of in place for Skem but I never managed to get it through um, Danny Mitchley, I had him at Skem, he was a number nine as well. Um, the area was they identified, he didn't score a lot of goals, so I wanted to work with what was here, and we and we did, we tried to work with it, and then obviously we still needed, I think it was confidence more, why the lads weren't scoring, and a mentality, and similar to when I went into Skem. Yeah. Um, and it's just a little change of scenery, and bring a couple of players in, and the signs that I've made, I think they speak for themselves, I think they're, they're not... They're established players, they're not just lads that you're just dragged in and, and given a, like, let's hope that they come good. They're, they're known, the 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 good players that yeah. will add to this already good group. Have you got someone who you're asked to go and watch? Or do you, um, do we you have get got out? a scout, we yeah. have got a scout. I've had a, I had a scout at Skem, but I've got a scout here as well who goes and watches games and, look, I do my own homework as well and probably, like most managers, non-league managers, you're working 24-7. Yeah. If you don't know anything about a team, I'm texting another manager. If you don't know about how they play, you have a look on YouTube. <laughs> you have a look at the games because look, that's immense. That that's your analysis sometimes. 
Um, I always watch our games back what I can. Um, Jason, who does our videos, he always sends them over to me more than enough and fantastic on that. Um, so yeah, that that's important and that and yeah. that we do I do get scouting analysis and that yeah I always do that and feedback from other managers. Vio Vio <laughs> Vio's great, isn't it? Yeah. Was well, it important though to be like proven winners? And like obviously you got your Kevin Ellison, you got like Steve Millen as well, who, who did go to the Vars with with Ryland and played in Wembley and stuff. Was it imp- important for you to bring in them proven winners for the side? Yeah, it is. So them four players. Kevin Ellison, obviously, his history and his career speaks for himself. Danny Mitchley was with me, part of the FA Cup first round. He scored the goal. Um, Hodge and Steve Milne, FA Vars winners, just won the MPL last season. Um, or Steve never, Steve was with Lowell Brecht, but the Vars winners and serial winners, basically. So yeah. I know what I'm bringing when they're, they're coming into the club. So, yeah, the, it is. It's massively important. It gives you a little bit of... The lads see him see different then as well. They see other different players coming into the club and realise and go, brings their game on then. Yeah. Because that's what they've done once they've seen Kevin. Kevin's come in and took the levels to another level. Kevin, um, Danny's come in and they're seeing now there's competition. Podge come in, took Ryan. Ryan's been immense actually since Podge has come in. Podge has suddenly got an injury to his pec and he could be out a bit long term, but Ryan's took his game to another level and Steve Milner, I'm open. Lads will see him and be like, do you know what? Every week you've got to be at the same level. Yeah. I'm hoping that I can. Because you've, you've already got the likes of, obviously, John McGrath, Little Jack. Fantastic. Uh, yes. Berkey, Nathan Berk. Fantastic. Yeah. I used to work with Nathan. He's fucking, yeah. yeah, he's quality. <laughs> um, I actually remember before you got the job, he took, took them for the game he, and he texted in like, the group chat that were in. He said, and someone just put it in and said it. Are you are you are you the new gaffer? And he was like, "Oh, fucking, I've only got it for I've got it for one game, being asked to take it." Um, him and Glenn, him and Glenn, yeah. so here against Dunstan. So we were all taking the mic out of him. Oh, you've got your fucking best winning and all that. They got <laughs> <Yeah>. beat. <laughs> it was the FA Cup game, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gutted they got beat in that because I won the match. I was gutted for another yeah. game. <laughs> I was gutted for him. I'd gone out earlier with Skem, and I was thinking, if these can get through, if I, if I get this job, do you know what I mean? I'll yeah. take it. Then I'll be in the next round of the FA yeah. Cup. Then, <laughs> uh, like a second life sort of thing, yeah, yeah. given into it. But <coughs> I mean, the, the, them players you've just mentioned, the, the top quality players, and there is a great group of players here at the club. And that that was what I looked at before I come here as well. Like the players I had at Skem, they're very loyal to me, and I was loyal to them. And I built a fantastic club and players. But here they had. Same type of players, good players, and maybe they were in a team as much as them, but on paper, a fantastic quality yeah. side where you look at them and go, wow, there's some some serious talent here. I've genuinely, ne- when we were in college, never seen a better player than Little Jack. Fantastic, isn't he? He's just injured at the minute. <laughs> See, yeah. But he is, he's on another level, he's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of... He's one of them, he just does things, and you think, I've yeah, just done that. He is on another level, it's... Um, Without putting too much pressure on him, obviously, because he, 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 carry, he carries the weight of City of Liverpool on him, wasn't yeah. he? Because he was one of the originals, him and John McGrath, they were here right from the start, near enough. So the weight of, his, of the world is on his shoulders, and I'm trying to get other people to carry some yeah, of yeah. him. So he's not as, it's got to go to Jack all the time, it's got to go to Jack Hazley, because we all know how good he is, but if you're one dimensional and everything's just got to go to him. Then there's no point playing as deep. Yeah. You're not gonna really you're gonna gonna be competitive. So it's a bit like I've compared it to like Coutinho when he played for Liverpool. Great. But if everything has to go through him, then there'll be games when he gets snuffed out. Yeah, yeah. And he might produce the magic in them tight games and win your games. But then when they, they took him out the equation and built another you're then seeing a different team. Yeah, yeah. That's not to say I'm taking Jackie's <laughs> out. It's can we work around them? Can we get players yeah. around them? Picking up responsibility and have a little move around, maybe. And doesn't always have to be as a number ten. What is your philosophy then with City Liverpool? Where do you <coughs> take them? What What's your your wish with them? To win, to win is a um, it's a good question on the philosophy because everyone. That's going all Pep Guardiola, don't they? When we start, I talking. said this the other day. Someone said, yeah. oh, "Ask him what, ask him about what his philosophy is." And I went, mm. "Well, no, because everyone was just expect him to say either Jurgen or Pep." <laughs> yeah, it, you know it what I mean? is. It, look, I'm a Liverpool fan, so you, you're gonna 
say Jürgen, aren't you? But I like Pep as well. But go back to like older school, like AC Milan and all that. Yeah. Like, Sacchi, they, the Liverpool teams and like Dag Leach and all that when I was younger, all them type of teams. But your philosophy has just got to be about winning. Yeah. Winners, when you're a, a, a coach at a lower level and there's no pressure on you to win, it can be about development. When you get to this level, or the levels below a little bit, it's about winning, isn't it? Yeah. Because there's no enjoyment if you're not winning. There's none whatsoever. So make it enjoyable, create the right environment for the lads. And it's all about can we get that end goal on a Saturday, do you know what I mean? Everything starts from here on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Training's good. We set the standards. We set the same methods. We create that environment. And then, bang, the Saturday, hopefully it all comes into practice. Um, yeah. I always, my philosophy, obviously, going to systems is I try to be as adaptable as I can. 4-3-3 is the main system that I think 99% of people in football play, isn't it? Because yeah. it's the popular one. The last few games we've been winning I've been playing 4 4 2 <laughs> <laughs> it's mad but, it the way that but getting the 10 to getting the one of my 10s to just drop in on yeah. onto the the 4 or 6 who goes into the midfield that's it it's mad the way certain and formations they just they just rotate around in reality they? if you spin that round and my 10 drops in that's a 4 3 3 or 4 yeah. 2 3 1 yeah whatever way you look it's then old school <laughs> 7 and a 7 and a 9 the old school years ago where you just get that or like that, yeah. simple, but not every game I'll play like that because you can be cut open if you have that. And we we found that the last 10, 15 minutes of the games to the day, we were, we were under the cosh a little bit because we were maybe too on the front foot too much. Maybe yeah. we need to start to retain the ball a little bit better. But no, it's um, adaptable is the, the best. Winning, adaptable and, and enjoyable, do you know what I mean? They're, they're the big factors and... And setting standards, you know what I mean? We've, we've come in and they've already had good practice anyway because Ella was a good manager and he's he set his standards here anyway. I just think he, he's probably a little bit unlucky in what, yeah. what happens. Um, but just set the standards and get confidence back and then you see totally different players. Two games ago, some of these lads looked down. They're skipping into training now. Yeah. Two games later, two wins. They're hugging each other, they're going out for drinks. So Hanley Town... We got a coach home. Coach was bouncing. The chairman was bouncing. Was <laughs> <laughs> the club was happy. Yeah. Because they got a win against a very good side who six or seven professionals in them, ex professionals. Saturday, we we were okay. I think we still can improve, but we've got another win. Yeah. So we're moving in the right direction. Last one from me. Go on. What advice would you give anyone who's starting out coaching now? Because obviously you've done done your B licence you've been quite proper successful in terms of non-league and promotions I and think coaching and managing are to totally different that's what yeah. I learned early doors as well so my ego was early doors I've got a coach I've got to take this session yeah because I need them players to see that I can do this as well it weighed me down because I'd be too much in the session I'd be constantly doing everything and be focused on him, not doing that, not doing that. And then you lose track of who's actually performing or who can do it. So now, once I've got my team behind me, then I can just oversee it all and yeah. watch it. Um, so that would be the difference between being a coach and a manager. A manager, you'd have to probably take that step back away and have a little overview of everything. Being a coach, though, look, just go with your your thoughts and your philosophy don't be influenced by what someone else tells you because football's that game where isn't it where you can sit in a boozer and there's always someone who's, who knows about football everyone knows about football don't they yeah. Yeah. so if you're a professional manager Pep Guardiola there's probably someone who sits in a boozer and telling him how to do it <laughs> or Jürgen Klopp isn't yeah. he and just be truthful to your, to your philosophy of how you want to play if you want to play expansive football keep believing it keep producing that do you know what I mean and the other one people use coaching badges as as a, a vehicle yeah we've we've all been on them we all do them we've done youth modules coaches and just take it step by step it's a learning curve we're all learning just do them when the time's right don't just do them just so you can go and get a badge in an academy 
or you can go and get it in a professional club. Just learn your curve because look, I've probably learnt more through non-league and, and I still coach for the for the internationals, Liverpool. I've learnt more, work with some fantastic coaches as well in the inter- internationals, but they don't coach non-league football or manage and they're looking at me enviously and I'm thinking, these are some top coaches who've got A licenses in the works, but for me, my they're looking at me better, do you yeah. know what I mean? And I'm thinking, it should be the other way around, shouldn't it? Yeah. As a coach, I'd just be truthful and just keep on your own philosophy yeah. and your own guidelines. You're a young coach, you're still going, no, you're hard though, you're still going through it and you're progressing the right way, you're doing 21s football, you're looking to go first team football or even be a coach and that, and that that's a, it. there's a pathway, isn't it? Yeah. Not everyone does that pathway, everyone wants that now straight at the top and I'd say I've probably done my white yes as they say I've done me learning on the pitch and yeah. on the field and some and you're gonna make mistakes you're a liar I made mistakes on Saturday yeah selling you in front of the camera yeah. and people probably seen that I brought players on and changed not the system but put them in other places with 3-0 up it's 3-2 I've then switched it back and gone oh ho, ho, let's just Bringing it in. Yeah. But you can't predict that from the sidelines and go, he's going to come on and he's going to score a world and change it. You can't do that. You just have to hope that your system sees a game out or it can mm. do that. Sorry if that's gone a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it's been boss to have you on. Boss Thank to have you come on for the first episode as well for us. So anyone who is watching, do uh, go and check out and go and watch us as well. I think that's important. Yeah, no, no, league. Listen, that's, that's the key thing. Um, we had a lot of backhands, didn't we, here? And I, I don't know whether they've lost that once they've gone over to over to Vauxhall's last season or the two seasons. Um, but I think it's really important that we do. Obviously, winning football is going to pull that in because there's a lot of people who want to watch successful football and attractive football. Just come and join us and just watch. If we're not good enough, then then fine. Do you know what I mean? I'll take that. But just give us an opportunity yeah. to push on. and Go on then, plug your next game. Go on. Trafford's on Saturday away. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Not another 3-2. I'll, uh, I'll have a scruffy 1-0 win, please. <laughs> I'll take that. And then the next one's Kids, gro- kids Grove at home um, the Saturday after the 15th. So I'm hoping that we get a decent crowd down there. Um, at Beatles Ground now, isn't it? Yeah, at Beatles Ground. So, thanks.